This week, something remarkable happened. Vaccine to fight COVID-19, a vaccine jointly developed by Pfizer and BioNTech has been found to be 90% effective. The US company Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech SE have said they haven't found any serious safety concerns with their vaccine and if approved, they can be put to use as soon as in December. But this does not mean that there aren't any other concerns. Even if this is the best chance we have got against the coronavirus, the development of other vaccines in different parts of the world won't stop. So what does this all mean for India? I'm Suraksha and welcome to our weekly COVID update, Coping with Coronavirus. This week, let's get into the world of vaccines for the novel coronavirus and see what's happening. As of November, more than 150 vaccines were in development. Before a vaccine can be administered on a population, it needs to go through multiple phases of trial to determine whether it is safe for a wide range of population. In the first two phases, the trial focuses on a small group of individuals and short-term immune response. The third phase of the trial involves a large cohort of people and the actual efficacy of the vaccine is tested and any potential side effects are noted. That's why it usually takes 10 to 15 years for a vaccine to be ready, to be administered on people. However, with COVID-19 effectively halting the world economy, governments and scientists across the world are working at a speed that hasn't been seen before. The pressure on them to deliver a vaccine is tremendous, as this is seen as the only way to return to any semblance of normalcy. However, this fast tracking raises several ethical questions. Could the speed in which this vaccine is being developed endanger the lives of people? With the anti-vax movement gaining steam across the world, including India, is the risk worth it? Due to the risks involved in a fast-track vaccine, a professor at the Hiro Center for Practical Ethics at Oxford University, Julian Savilescu, has also suggested paying people to get the vaccine shots. The suggestion has raised further questions on informed consent and whether it is right to offer people money. Be it money or no money, Indians seem to be the most trusting bunch, with 87% of the countrymen keen to get vaccinated, the highest among the countries surveyed. This number has remained unchanged since August. However, around 10 of the 15 countries surveyed are now less keen on getting the vaccine, compared to in August. All thanks to the concerns about side effects and the fast tracking of the vaccine trials. Apart from Pfizer, Russia has also announced that its Sputnik V vaccine has demonstrated an efficacy rate of 92% among 16,000 volunteers. Russia Direct Investment Fund, through its partnership with Dr. Reddy's, will supply over 100 million doses to India upon regulatory approval here. Meanwhile, the AstraZeneca vaccine, developed in collaboration with the Oxford University, has entered the final phase of human trials. The Serum Institute of India in Pune, the largest producer of vaccines in the world by volume, has enrolled over 1,600 participants for AstraZeneca's final stage trials. It has also announced that 40 million doses of the vaccine have been made available. Whether all these 40 million doses are reserved for India is not yet known. The institute is also in the middle of seeking regulatory approval for the Novavax vaccine. With so many vaccines proceeding to later stages of trials, the mood this week has been hopeful. And it is being reflected in the markets too. However, India has many logistical challenges ahead. If we are to administer these vaccines to the world's second most populous nation, the government has already announced that the frontline workers from both the public and private sectors will get priority. It has been reported that the government has already begun identifying the 30 crore priority beneficiaries. However, there is a chance that India might miss out on the Pfizer vaccine as the country does not seem to have the capabilities to store the vaccine in ultra-cold temperature of minus 70 degrees Celsius. This has once again brought the issue of rich countries with better logistical capabilities getting a better deal with most promising vaccines. The logistical challenges that India will face are going to be unique to us. In our next video, we will tell you about what we as a nation need to do before we can begin thinking about distributing these vaccines. Until then, stay safe and we will see you next week.